In this video, we will be going over three of the hardest six mark questions from GCSE Biology. And from working with and tutoring so many students, I'm judging the difficulty of these questions based on how badly they are answered. So if at first look you're looking at the question and thinking this is not as difficult as I expected them to be, try pausing the video there, have a go at the question and see how many marks you actually got for that question. A lot of the time, the more difficult concepts are better answered on a six mark question just because students are prepared more and revise more for those topics. Whereas with the so-called easier topics, students revise them a lot less and prepare less for the six markers and therefore lose a lot of silly marks. So make sure to make a note of the mark schemes as we go along with the questions so that you can revise these properly and not lose those marks. Because remember, it's about how many marks you pick up on the entire paper, which determine what grade you get, not whether you answer the difficult questions better than the easier questions. It's about the total marks added together. So the marks that you may perceive that are easier to pick up are just as important as the difficult marks. So make sure to pay attention for those also. The first question that we will be going through reads, Zorses are not able to breed. Scientists could produce more zorses from this source by adult cell cloning. The diagram shows how the scientist might clone a zorse. And it shows the diagram. Use information from the diagram and your own knowledge to describe how adult cell cloning could be used to clone a zorse. And to get five to six marks, you need a clear, detailed and accurate description of all the major points of how adult cell cloning is carried out. The first point that the mark scheme says is to mention that a skin cell from the source is used. Secondly, unfertilized egg cell from the horse. Then you remove the nucleus from the egg cell, take the nucleus from the skin cell, put into an empty egg cell, then give it an electric shock. This causes egg cell division or the embryo is formed then place the embryo in the womb or uterus. The key things that some students drop marks on here is missing out key details in the process or even how they explain or lay it out. Remember, it's important to be scientific when you're giving your explanation as well. The next question that we'll go through is another process question. It says, a student is given a tube containing a liquid nutrient medium. The medium contains one type of bacterium. The student is told to grow some of the bacteria on agar jelly in a Petri dish. Describe how the student should prepare an uncontaminated culture of the bacterium in the Petri dish. You should explain the reasons for each of the steps you describe. The mark scheme divides the answers into three separate sections. We have the pre-inoculation stage, inoculation stage, and post-inoculation. And it's important that you're giving good amount of detail from each of these little sections. What should you say in the pre-inoculation stage? You should say the Petri dish and agar are sterilized before use. This is to kill unwanted bacteria. The inoculation loop is passed through a flame, or you can also mention a sterile swab, and this is to kill other bacteria. In the inoculation stage, you should mention that a loop or a swab is used to spread bacteria onto an agar. Also that the lid of the Petri dish is open as little as possible, and this is to prevent microbes from entering. In the post-inoculation stage, you should state that the dish is sealed with tape to prevent microbes from entering, and then also you should incubate to allow the growth of the bacteria. The next question is about the carbon cycle, as shown in the diagram. Describe how living things are involved in the constant cycling of carbon. And I'll read you the process that the mark scheme details. Firstly, it talks about that plants photosynthesize. Photosynthesis causes the intake of carbon dioxide. Green plants use carbon to make carbohydrates, proteins, fats, and organic compounds as well. You don't need to name all of these, but if you name a few of them, then your answer is gonna be a lot stronger than someone that doesn't. Next, you should talk about how animals eat plants, plants respire, animals respire then, and respiration releases the carbon dioxide. Green plants and animals then die, microorganisms decay or decompose on dead organisms, and then finally the microorganisms respire. And of course, it's a process that occurs over many years and it's not as simple as what I've just stated, but this is all the information that you need to know to explain this sort of question in a six mark format. Now, a lot of you may be thinking that this process is what's in your revision guides or your study books, but I've just read out exactly what is in the mark schemes. So you could go ahead and just study what's in your revision guides and kind of write that down in the exam and hope for the best. Or you can do what I would do and what I was doing in my GCSEs to get those top grades is look directly at the mark schemes, look exactly how they phrase what they want to be seen on there and just learn it from there as well. So then at least you can be as concise and effective and you know you've exactly got what they're asking for. Comment below if you've got any other strategies or techniques to answer these sort of six mark questions or have an easier way to revise them. And if you'd like to see a chemistry, physics and a maths version of this video, then make sure to like the video. And the same goes if you want to see a part two to this, so more GCSE biology six mark questions. 
And as usual, if you'd like to book a free one-to-one -one taste lesson with my team of tutors, then the link is in the video description. I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.